Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, good night and welcome to the No Main Topic show. Here it is, No Main Topic. We discuss any and everything. No filters, no censors, no bleep button. Pull up a seat and have a listen. Make no mistake, this is what has been missing. From political to the mystical, I promise never to bullshit you. Shout outs to S Street Media and the Good Brothers Math and Sosa. You can follow us at S Street Media on Instagram and myself, Coquito King New York. Coquito underscore King underscore and why how y'all been folks it's been a while since i've been around i've been going through some things uh the end of the year proved to be a bit tragic for me and my family we suffered a couple of big losses and uh you know we're gonna be all right um a lot of lessons to be learned from that um a lot's been happening in the world since all these things been going on we got celebrities getting all they shit thrown out of their closets out in the middle of the front street and it smelled like a bunch of ass we got Presidents acting the fucking for well, this we this been going on for two years now, but we got the whole White House out there falling apart. We got the government shut down. People can't get their food stamps. They can't get they they seps. They food. I mean um food stamps section eight. They can't get city febs. They can't get oh my god. And nobody knows what's going to happen. Um I'm not the one to get too hysterical about it. I try to find a silver lining because you know your next move should be your best move. Um. Sitting here now, I got my oldest daughter, Shakira. Hi. Hey, girl, how you doing? How you feel? She a little shy. It's her first time. See, she had the headphones on. She won't mess up her fro. She real fashionable. She she conscious of how she look, but she make it seem flawless. What's going on? How you feel? Fine. All right, you got to talk into the microphone, baby. Oh, this way? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. get comfortable. Right, right into it. Don't don't make it weird. <laughs> What's going on? How you feeling today? Fine. All right. Um... Well, today's show definitely going to be from a different perspective. It's not only from me talking and some other people, but today we're going to have it from you. You know, you the fresh 18-year-old, you know, the young black youth, educated, woke the fuck up. It's my child. That's how it works. And definitely a black woman on her way to great things. And, you know, so I brought you here because, you know, for me, you are uh, very much an inspiration, you know. Uh -huh. And it's a, definitely a great reflection of myself and definitely a mother because she raised you very well. And, you know, I'm learning so much about myself through you, like the conversations we have, the way we talk about things. It's real open, real easy. You know, and, you know, ain't no, no bounds not to be crossed. You know, there's lots you feel like you can learn from me. And at the same time, I do feel like I'm learning from you. I'm very grateful for that. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what's your interests, hobbies, you know, what you like to do, what you know? Um, it depends. Kind of like go with the flow. I don't really have anything particular. Just try things first. So when you check out, I, I saw you every day he's watching the movie. What, what was it called? Um, movie. Anime joint. What was you watching the other day? You kept telling me you wanted me to watch. Um, Death Letter, Death Note Death or something? Note? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, look, my anime, my anime go back to Yudo Suki Doji. It go back to the Overfiend. You know, she might not know about any of all that. It go back to uh, Ellen Lee, uh, what is it, Elvin Lee, Elvin Lee, something, I forgot the name of it. But it goes back to all that, it goes back to Fist of the North Star, it goes back to, uh, look, it go back to Sega Genesis on them, Last Battle, it go back to Thunder Force, it go back to all of that good stuff. And, you know, when you're 18, you don't really remember all those good things, you really wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, for me, when I, I talk to you, it's, it's like seeing myself a bit when I was younger. So, when I, you know, I ask you, like, what you doing, like, you, you go into it a little bit. Like, like for instance, you're always fashion conscious. Like, what? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you was just complaining a moment ago, I don't want to mess up my fro, put these no, headphones on. I don't want to. But, it, it, but it's something about having, you know, headphones on and being on the radio. It, it kind of make it like, you know, you got something awesome going on. You know what I'm saying? So, your hair is good. Thank you, know. you are good. I don't want it to be messed up. You're straight. You got yeah. your... You know, all right. So, um, what about your music? What do, what do you listen to? And I'm not just say, what are you kids? Like, what do you listen to? I listen to music to make you dance. Like what? Good time, like um, dance like, hall. Like 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 freestyle. Luka, no, like cultural music. Like, <laughs> Wait, you gotta take it to the island. Why you shut down freestyle so fast? Cause I just I don't identify with it. I I don't know. Freestyle is great cleaning music. If you got any Hispanic friends. You be in the house on Saturday or Sunday, when freestyle's on, you want to help them clean up. That's real. I mean, uh, I clean up, I clean up <laughs> to dance hall in Soka. Oh, word? Soka? And All right. Afro beats. 
What kind of, what's, what's that? What's the Afro beats? Afro beats is an African music genre. You know, they have all types of beats in there. It can sound like dancehall sometimes. Other times it could just sound like they're just straight speaking well, Yoruba. So how many, how many kids your generation listen to Afro beats? A, a whole lot. All right, so that, so that be at the parties and all that? Yeah, at the college parties all the time they play that. When they had Haitian Festival and they had, um, yeah, all those type of events, they will always play, you know, some Afro beats or just dance hall or soca. I listen to all it right. just, it makes me want to dance. It's positive music. All right, cool, cool. I know you're really into all that dance. I had you in front of them, them African dance classes. You know, we got Song mm -hmm. of the Valley, got La Rock Bay, you know. Even um, Noni got a class. I mean, yeah, we should. I should try. I mean, my favorite African dance is called Shaku Shaku. Oh, we heard? Yeah, for the um, Christmas thing. Oh, no, was it, was it Christmas or was it... Um, the harvest. I think it was... What song go with it? Huh? What song any go with song it? Any song you could do a Shaku Shaku too. Well, okay. not really any song, but like if a song is like up-tempo or something like that, you could dance to it. Okay. There's That's a whole cool. bunch of African dances, but Shaku Shaku is my favorite. All right, bad. So what's your favorite African rhythm? What do you mean African rhythm? Like you got, you know, Odunde, you got, um, you got uh, Kuku, you got. I don't uh, know those specifically. Really? really? No. So what's your, so what's the, what's the Afro rhythms about? Who, name some artists. I never, I, I never heard you know, of. You got Wizkid, you got Fouls, you got Yuji, you got Burner Boy, you got Rakito Banks. Oh, Wizkid. I haven't. Yeah, he's really popular. You got T.Y. Savage, T.Y. Savage, um, a bunch. See, because I African music, you start talking, come out, I get Fela, Fela Kuti. We're not doing like drum music. They uh, do have drums, but that's like part of the beat, mm. musical influence, stuff like that. All right, yeah. cool. So, yeah, if you in the high in the fashion, you always, you know, you be, yeah. you, you be in that mirror with that toothbrush at them. The edges. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. They're you, out today, though. They're yeah. <clears throat> yeah, them edges, the edges is crazy. The edge game is silly. It's ridiculous. I don't even ask it. It's, I mean, I mean, like you know, goofy looking, but yeah, yeah. Good. gotta take care of them. Your little sister be like gonna get them, them, them damn, damn things in their hair, and they don't want to get her own hair braided. And, oh, I ain't got no edges. They all tuck back under them bullshits. Yeah, you can't, you can't do. Yeah, braids all that long hair, I want to braid it. Um, yeah. So, so what's um, what's going on with you with with social? Like, what do you what, like? How do you feel about what's going on in the world? You know, I don't really care. Bird, just I don't bother you none. No. Oh, wow. All right, so. I don't think it should. Well, I mean, I, it's not there to bother you. I mean, you know, things will Because most people on. are hysterical. I don't feel like that's necessary. So I just, eh, whatever. All right, good. That's Life that's nice on. to know that you're not willing to sit there and go, ah, oh, my God, no more food stamps. What are we going to do? They're going to rob me, kill us all. Like, oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not, no. I'm not going through all the emotions at all. Like, that's... yeah. Um, I was talking to my people about how Killer Mike made the point to, um, a couple, he made a video a couple of years ago, and he was talking to his people down south about how they expect their children to go out there and stand up against injustice, but their kids ain't ready to, they don't know how to hunt, they don't know how to farm, they can't shoot, they're they not don't. Equipped. Yeah, they, they're, not, they're not good for survival. And he was like, don't send them out there to get killed if you haven't taught them how to really, you know, how to really Anything, get. Yeah. Right. So you think of those type of situations, how important do you think it is for young people to understand those basic skills? important because all these things that we have now they can be easily taken away what you, what you mean like we have luxuries we have we have like you know the ability to have stove lights heat stuff like that a lot of us are like in yo, yo save me some sodas huh <laughs> i don't know i just feel like we, we just have a lot of luxury things that we don't know how to fend for ourselves so i think it is essential to know those things especially swimming 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 is really important how, how important is swimming like, it's a, it's a life or death situation. Like, you mm. must learn how to swim, especially if you live by the coast, like Coney Island. Yeah, we're from Coney Island, so. so we, we're, we're underneath sea level. Right. You need I, to learn how to swim. Yo, listen, when I was growing up as a kid, my mother would tell you, listen, get out. Summertime, just listen, get out. Go do something. You got, you got basketball court. You got playgrounds. You got beach. Climb. Go <laughs> do something. Yeah, get yeah. the fuck out. So we'd be at the beach all day swimming our asses off, yo. And if anybody know about real old school Coney Island shit, you was the fucking man if you could swim past the rocks. You know what I'm saying? You could really make it past the rocks and survive. You was the man. But they've changed the, um, the underwater topography of that place, which means that the level is now much, much lower, especially down by 33rd, 36th Street Beach. They don't want you to swim too far and deep because the riptide will take you out. You know what I'm saying? And, and that be, yeah, you finished after that. You know, you on your way to wherever the fuck that water taking you, and you're going to make it back. 
like even a good like a Navy SEAL swimmer might be able to get alongside the current and make it back, but it'd be uh, it'd still be a hard task. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, it's definitely a skill. Swimming is I think it's a, l- a little more effective than running, easier on the joints, and it makes you uh, get your your wind up in your lungs much better. Um, so right now you're in school, right? And um, what school are you in right now? John Jay. John Jay. You in John Jay Law School? <laughs> I'm not trying to clown you or nothing, but I know people saying, like, you go to John Jay, it's not law school. But aren't they teach you things about law in John Jay? Yeah, all the time. Okay. I remember you give me the flashcards as a home. What are some of those things that we would, like, what were those, some of those terms you would discuss? We you remember? discussing things involving American judiciary, the Supreme Court, legislature, stuff like that. Okay, cool. It was from my law class. <laughs> All right. So, how interesting was that when you first got to really see it? Like, it in was this- very interesting because we did a lot of case study, and I got to see how the law, how it changes over time, and how it works for certain people. You just to know what's going on <clears throat> and be be aware of your um, social climate and political climate while you're involving yourself with crime or anything illegal. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, in reading those cases, what did you learn about? how they treat people? Well, I mean, it started off pretty simple. People who had money had all the access to things and those who didn't just simply were left out. That's Mm. how it kind of is now, but there's a more humane aspect to it. So that's what I learned. It's just money is involved in a lot of things. Money, status, and your race has to be made sense to me. Um, What was the inspiration? What's the basis of your study? Like, when you go to school, what was the the reason you went to this school? What did did you want to learn? learn from this school? I wanted to learn how African-American people, how can they be like, how can they operate in the legal system, in the political system, how does that realm treat them and how we can operate in that as far as understanding how it goes and knowing how it works for our advantage and can even disadvantage us, depending Mm. on how situations are. What was inspiration? for the basis of your study? Like, what made you want to look into that? Because you could have been culinary, you could have been... Oh, the inspiration? Um, it's, a, it's a mixture between not knowing a lot of things, like me being deprived of these kinds of stories or experiences. I wanted to learn more about it, and also I wanted to, like, get personal with this because I'm somebody who is also African-American. Um, I think it's important, you know, seeing people from where I'm from. It's like the police are always on watch. And I want to figure out, like, you know, what's the point for that? Like, obviously, it could be considered crime, but it's also, like, some type of, it's just, to me, I want to figure out why. That's mm. it. And also with, um, <coughs> you know, social, political problems like mass shootings, mass incarceration, the war on drugs. It's like, a, it's like a timeline of just obstacles or blockades put in ways so that way black people don't, we don't have the movement that we would need. Right, right. To yeah, strive, it is. To, you know, work together. I feel like in this society, things are put in place so we have to be selfish. So we have to, you know, think every man for himself. And that's what I really wanted to understand. A little bit closer. So, yeah. All right. So you got a handle on what it is you, you're looking for. You, you got your ideas down pat. That's always a blessing. I mean, sometimes you it does vary because I feel like, I have points where I'm like, what's the point in it? Sometimes I feel like, is there really a bigger, like, what's the bigger picture? But then I, once I start feeling like it's irrelevant, something just comes in my face and says, no, look at this, look at that. It's always more, more to the story. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like that, too. I got to kind of know all of what's going on, because it ain't even just for the sake of conversation. It's about so I know what actually happened. Yeah. It's like, you know, with the Bill Cosby case, a lot of people don't know if they didn't follow the case, really, that... Um, him and that woman, they were kind of, they were legitimately close. It was, it was a, to me, it was more like, what the hell, but I can't tell folks what the fuck to do because you ain't telling me shit. But what I learned was that <clears throat> the mother really didn't like their relationship. She felt it was very inappropriate. So she tried to get her to record Bill Cosby saying, talking about what's going on, and they couldn't get him to really say what they wanted him to say, so they ended up doctoring the tape. Now, he hired a professional to see uh, if the tape was doctored. They said it was yes. They said yes. They went to seven different jurisdictions with this thing, and all of them said that this has been doctored, so we can't really use it. Now, all of a sudden, a new DA gets elected, and then she tells a judge to go ahead and put it in. And she happens to be black. 
You see what I'm saying? Mm. And not that she should not, you know, don't know, oh, don't go after the brother, this and that. If he did all that shit, like, get him. Make no mistake. You're not going to hide because you black. You ain't going to talk no shit about, me. oh, you wanted the network, they want to bring you down. If you guilty, you fucking guilty. And all the motherfuckers involved with you, all right? That's just the facts of the matter. Make no mistake about that shit. You did it. You did it. You beast fucked it. You did it. All right? So, but still, now for the sake of wanting the system to work, if he was guilty or not, that whole thing was fabricated. You see what I'm saying? So you talked about earlier about how to treat people different. It's clear that it's a, definitely a difference. Like, why would you work that hard to, to take this dude down? Despite all of what you heard, right? Whether or not it was about a bunch of other women, like, it's just nuts how the whole thing happened. It sets a very bad legal precedent, don't you think? For for someone to be able to enter in evidence that's not real or try to or try to issue orders to burn evidence, like you won't find out, that goes on a lot, especially with black people, especially with black men. It happens a whole lot. But um, it's good to see that you're taking up the kind of study in school and you using it, um, that school almost like a platform to discover what you don't know yeah. about what you want to learn. That's pretty awesome. To expand awareness, really, and okay. have things to teach other people who may not want to know or who don't have, I guess, you know, any interest. It's like just know something before. Right, I, right. Because they're all around you, laws everywhere. That's actually one of the themes that I learned in my law society class. And my mm. major, too, is law society. And they tell you, laws everywhere. It controls everything you do. Even if, even if you think you are like not controlled by it, law doesn't have to be um, Supreme Court, Constitution, police. Law is what your mom says. Yep. Law is that streetlight telling you to stop. That's law. Yep. Law is going to school at a certain time. Law is waking up at a certain time. Yep. Law is getting to your job on time. Something like that. That's all formats of law. It's something that controls what you do. It has power over what you do regardless if you don't like it or not you right it's, it. it's, it's really ever present it's and sometimes i explain to people when they go through shit they have to go through court let's say something as simple as landlord tenant court right it's so important that you show up for your court dates it's so important that you show up and get the information it's so important that you ask what you can do right especially landlord tenant court you're going through that bullshit be one of the main things you got to do is first get your rent and escrow always that's the main thing just for you your shit's on record and they got to fix whatever and it goes like that if you don't, if you, when you don't go through the court process, it's like nothing ever happened except what you did wrong, and that's the problem that most folks have, especially black folks, about uh, being, you know, forward about what we talked about, how these things affect us. You know, what I'm saying individually as a whole. Um, I mean, you got two years already out of high school. How you pull that off? Pull two off. years. You got two years of college out of high school. How you pull that off? Um, good grades. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I had I had good grades too. I didn't get it's two a, years of college. It's the ECI program. That's what it is. And if you maintain a good GPA throughout your junior high school years and your high school years, then you get to take college classes for free. So you take classes that are sometimes two credits, three credits, and then yeah, when you do your time, you get your degree. So right now, I have an associate's degree in the arts that I accumulated credits over time since I was fourteen. All right, that's what's up. So you enjoyed your time in high, in um, high school. So you had two graduations this year, which is pretty dope. So you just got two more years of school and you're done, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, right, cool. I graduate either <coughs> in spring 2020 or fall 2020 with my bachelor's in law and society. Okay. So that should be pretty fun. So, so tell me who John Jay was. We ain't going to go John too far into it. John Jay was the first Supreme Court justice, according to <laughs> the stuff I learned in my class. Yeah, the, um, the I school really lore. Have, I don't really have any personal information about him because I'm just there for my major. But um, I could oh, you tell you, only, I could oh, tell you only, about the college environment. You only here so you don't get fined? <laughs> I mean, I could say it was a college environment. It's pretty fun. They have a lot of parties. It's, it's helpful. Lots of groups. Look, I ain't, I, 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 ain't, I ain't singing to school. You start this party and me stop. <laughs> when you go when you go deal with um kids on campus on a social level, do you find that it's different between different types of people? Like you age know, groups? That and you know, you know, those who are not black, you know. The un the the, the non blacks. I mean not really. <laughs> not really. There's there's a whole bunch of there's like a nice demographic of students there. But um, oddly enough, I don't really merge well with people from my age group. Like, usually people who I really hang out with are, like, su significantly older than I am. And I think it's because of how I can handle myself in conversation. Like, I don't really get anywhere with people who are, like, around my age. 
I feel like they're a little superficial in their mind, probably haven't like gotten to that point, or they just simply don't find anything interesting about what I'm talking about. So it doesn't really matter to me. But um, as far as the demographics in there, it's it's whatever. It's like it's a pretty it's a good mix. Definitely, they're into culture. Um, they're just they're into that stuff over there. Very pro LGBT. Very comfortable. You know, good spaces. A lot of feminism. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, nah, yeah. She ain't she ain't gonna code on nobody. She ain't gonna cop to something she don't do. So that's a good thing. She keeps to herself. You know, to hopefully attract the right kind of people. Yeah. Um, the current state of this country right now. The um, what current state? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I I know you said earlier a lot of things don't really bother you, but what do you like? What do you think is really going on out there? What you think is happening right now? Cause it's different when I say what I think is happening. I'm 38. You 18. What's what's what I think is happening? Yeah. I'm not sure. I mm. don't have a clear idea about it. I mean, I I hear about it, but I don't really take a deep interest in it because a lot of things are not what they seem. They could be lying to us right now about everything, and they're allowed to. Mm. What can we do about it? Nothing. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty deep. My, my stance is a little more involved, and people have heard it a million times, so I really ain't gonna go into it. Um, <laughs> but as far as it, like, as far as black people go, something that kind of pertains to you just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when I say it, I don't mean it to be like we above other black people, but you know, when you have loftier ideas and other people who might look like you, there could be some uh, differences, big fucking stark differences. So it's not to say one's better than the other. It's just you know what you we know, doing. We doing over this over here. Yeah. Um, what are some solutions that you think uh, black people can implement to, you know, not be in certain fucked up situations? Hmm. Like, where do we begin, right? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I've, I didn't tell the people that, you know, you left out of high school, you busted out with all A's with this 30-slide uh, yeah. presentation. Oh, yeah, I got an A-plus on that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit because, I mean, you know, <laughs> talk about hitting white people in the head with, with, with their own tools. Oh, that shit was magnificent. That was and pretty, that was pretty like, rudimentary for, for what I did. Because I was, like, what, 16 or 17 She said, she said I had surface facts for these niggas and they was running. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I show it to people like James Small. I show it to people like Uriel Charles. I show it to people like Linda Jeffries. Oh, and they're like, my work? That of course work. I did. I, know, I mean, like, I'm not palsy wowsy with them. But when I do get a chance to be in their presence, I like to show them that hey, listen, this is this is came out of my house. Like, and don't what were their, um, don't think yeah, the house the house is getting stronger. That that's really what is more to, more about to help them understand. Um, but but the uh, presentation, what were their like interpretations of it? Oh, they loved it. Oh, that's good. They they really enjoyed it. They you know they asked you know who who you were, how old you were. They they figured it was something out for high school. You know, because they come from the era of black exes. They come from five-year-olds doing algebra back in the 50s and whatnot and in and, and schools of black teachers. You know, you had those small things here and there during the specific times in this country, uh, the past 100 years in this country. But, but to um, answer your question about, like, what's a good starting point, um, good economics. Mm-hmm. No, only we. This is a this is America. They only understand money, honestly. Money and business. That's real. Yeah, that's it. Um, good economics. That's what you need first. A lot of okay. people just don't. Some people don't even use banks. A lot of a lot of poor people don't even use banks. They don't trust them. Yeah. Um. So just being able to have good economics, a good understanding of how money works. Okay. That's the first step. Okay. So. Uh, Financial literacy, basically, we're trying to say. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. That's I'll, important because it, it runs your life. That's another second yeah. of law. It runs you. <laughs> I always thought that financial literacy would be good uh, therapy, therapy for black people because it teaches you how to be your best with the one thing you need in life, and that's a little bit of cash. It's real. Yeah. Money is very necessary whether you like it or not. And it's sad that it has to be so materialistic, but it's like we can't, we can't rely on, you know, more internal things to fix our to fix those kinds of issues right now. Like right. a lot of us are just impoverished. Yeah, in you know? more ways than just one. Like you even get cats like Matt Fasosa doing their own thing. Shout out to S Street Media. S Street Media on Instagram. You know what it is. These guys have a great idea and they have a lovely platform. And anybody that I think has something to say like myself, I bring them over here so they can get put on. Um, even though you can always do this yourself, when you're with a group like this, it shows that you know we have something positive happening. 
And I always want, and I brought, I want to bring a different side to uh, what Extreme Media brings. It's not to talk about anybody to say this is better, this is not. I bring information. I bring, you know, I, I keep it on a, you know, on the on the grassroots level, on the, the 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 gritty level, you know, so that anybody, everybody can see it. It's not above. It's not below. You see what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I, right there off the bat, I see that that is something that can help a lot of people out. Um, but like, what else? What else can people do to, uh, you know, stem the tide of what's happening or what might be coming? You know, what could they do to not be in the situation? Hmm. I'm not too sure yet. I mean, I, I just, I would say as of now, that would be the only idea I had. Because a lot of people are stubborn. They kind of don't want to do anything different because they don't know what it's like. They can't, like, get out of that box that they've yeah. been formed into. Yeah, yeah. So many people will actually reject the idea of unification. And it doesn't have to be for anything positive. I mean, good or bad. It's just the idea that there's a unit of people who have the same goal, you know? Right, yeah. And there are different ways to go about it. And that really pushes, that pushes progress. Different ideas, you know? But what about together and stuff like that. What about people who not so much are against it, but they take real strong stances and not being the biggest parts of it, the most consistent parts? What do you... What what happens with those people? Those people, they just have to figure something out individually, I would say. I mean, either way, there's something that needs to be done, just in terms of bettering conditions. Right. I mean, we, we should just take a look at people who come into these low-income neighborhoods and set up shop. Like, how do they do it? How yep. do they do it? Easy enough. Um. Uh, yeah, you, you really hit it on the head right there. Um. One of the things I always talked about with cats I was trying to build with in, in Freemasonry and in other, you know, esoteric science, you know, you know, study areas was that it's important to have a financial base if you're going to do anything. Yep. Right? You can talk about, you can go down to the dollar bill, what's on it, the spells, the this. You can go into all that all you want. End of the day, that currency, that electronic flow of cash dictates what your ass can, can and can't do. And you don't have to be a piece of shit with money. You could be a, you could be a, you could be like a, like the Wayne family out of the Batman comics. These people were worth billions, but they still rode the train and all that, the subway. They didn't see themselves as above people. And they did everything they could to help people. They were doctors. So you can be that way. You can be generous with your gifts. You don't have to be a recluse piece of shit. You know what I mean? Um, I think that a lot of black people have a problem with money big time. I think that mm-hmm. they're always worried about where every little 10 cent is going. Like, Brothers can't find a hundred to give, but want to know the itinerary on ten fucking dollars. It's like it's ridiculous. Now, anybody that gets out from under that thinking automatically, they begin to lose a bit of blackness according to these people. So now, when you have that situation, you know that can that can mess with the mind of somebody that's potentially great, diamond in the rough. What would you say to that person? It's probably somebody like your age. What would you say to that person if they got people in their corner who don't really? Uh, respect them, like, you know, respect their good ideas. They don't see how forwardly progressive it is to help their situation out. What do you say to those people? Like, what, what? Um, I would tell them it's a little bit unfortunate that you don't have people supporting you, but, you know, this is something you need to do by yourself. Not everybody's going to be in your team. Some some can just drop you off and, you know, they just look at you sideways or look at you funny. You got to help yourself first. And then talk about you behind your back, right. girl. But it's okay. Him. Let them talk. If no one's talking about you, you're doing something wrong. That's how I look at it. If True you don't indeed. have haters, and <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Yeah, you no, know, they listen, listen. To be honest. Uh, just... they, they serve a purpose. And see, me, I'm the kind of person, my heart's a little bit bigger than that. I'll be more one and try to, I'll try to figure out a way to help you out. And sometimes I get stuck there because some people really just not worth it. But you try, try, try just the mm-hmm. same because you want them to see that they deserve a chance. And this is what it is. Somebody that you've never seen in your life that'll give you that kind of chance. So at least recognize that you're at least worth it. Um, you said that in when you were in school, they were giving you uh, examples of like a perfect society. Like what, what was your take on that? Or uh, what was it like a, how to build a society? Like what was it that you were oh, doing? Oh, I think we were talking about in my criminology class where yeah. we had to make a crime prevention society. Crime, wow, that sounds big. Yeah, that was for a criminology class. So um, we each had to partner up and pick something. So I basically gave like the, the blueprint of it. Mm. And my friend, he made the presentation for me. But in my blueprint, it consisted of the environmental factors uh, improving. 
It's right. like nature versus nurture. If you're coming from an environment that's constantly plagued with like poverty and crime and stuff like that, um, you know, it's likely that you'll conform to that. That's just kind of like a psychological thing versus somebody who grew up in like a very nice neighborhood. You get to travel outside. You get to feel like, you know, okay, more things are accessible to me versus being in a place that's very constricted and you're always on watch by like what? The police or somebody. Um, but in my, in my uh, crime prevention policy, we, well, I came up with the idea of um, something called collective efficacy. And it's collective a term, efficacy. Yeah. Okay. It's a term that that can be described as having a sense of belonging in your community. That's mm. the first place that we I will start at because if you're in a community where like you know you can trust your environment and you can trust your people, that reduces crime because like now you know what's going on. You kind of already informed. Nobody's kind of left out of the dark. And also, if you're in a community where you feel like a sense of oneness, you'll keep it looking nice. You'll keep it clean. It won't it won't smell a certain way. It won't be looking like it won't look garbage. Like it won't look trash. It will look very nice and presentable. It will just make you feel like, okay, I'm part of this. Uh, I feel happy about being part of this. And this is because collective efficacy. Like you can know right. the people you should feel you. good about you should feel good about where you you're should from. feel good when it's your turn to clean that shit up. Basically, yeah. Yeah, pretty much it's like, yeah, this is where I'm from and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything negative, like, oh, I'm from here because we got the worst rap. Like, nah, that's, that's, like, why would you want that? Yeah, true, you know what true. I'm and then um, the next one I was moving over into was changing the education system. Right. Versus, like, you know, ha let, let's not have it be so robotic. Like, they don't want to combine religion and education, but the way these schools are structured now, it's like a Catholic church. It's like, how, 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 it's like the, it's like ancient a Catholic schools. church. I mean, it's like it's like not Catholic church, but it's like church in general. Like it's like an old it's like Sunday school or a Catholic school. It has the same algorithm where you have to be quiet, be upright, follow follow all these rules, and it's one teacher and they tell you everything to do. That's kind of like how do you expect people to activate their learning senses? Like it doesn't work that way. Like, every child, every student does not learn the same. There has to be more interaction. Has to be useful things to learn versus like oh learning that this is sedimentary rock like okay but how's that gonna help me get out of here and do something with my money or do something with myself personally it's just mm. it's not it's not useful personally it's really not useful like, if you're gonna spend eight hours somewhere like let it let it help you grow not here to learn about this angle equals 70 like who cares like what can i do with that like somebody who's like 14 15 what can i do with that nothing so I think it's about making education environment um, useful. A lot of children have hidden talents. They can't ever tap into it because they worry about getting this grade. Like that's really like, eh. Like my high school experience was all about that. Like, oh, get this grade, take this test. It's like, I don't, like it just becomes like, I don't care about it anymore. And then it becomes so much pressure because your parents want you to do good. And if your grade slips, here they are, all in your face talking about, why I don't look at this? I'm like, come on now, like sit in this classroom, for 10 months and tell me how you feel. Yo, Governor Chris Christie, when they had that uh, that Common Core map, right? He Terrible. was reading one of the problems and whatnot, and I reading all that shit. He said, yo, all oh, this is a fucking mistrial. Do you see this trick word to yeah. And now for a lawyer to call it a mistrial, that, duh, that means all the word in there is wrong. That means the whole show done got and they, fucked and up. And they have 13 year olds doing this. Yo, it, pff, listen who, here. Who don't care about this for a single moment. <laughs> right, and, like, and really, and like have it in their head. I don't, I don't have to quite pay that much attention. Like, no, paying attention is free. Right. <laughs> so definitely like to reform the education system would be a bigger part because if you have students who who actually care about school and stuff like that, it just makes them feel more driven to do bigger and better things. It's like, you just don't come to school for this amount of time and you come back home and then you forget everything. How are you learning? That's not learning. It's yeah, no, re parroting, pretty no much. retention. Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's, that's not learning. It's not, it's not something that's helpful to you whatsoever. So definitely okay. increasing education. And then the next one I had was buying and selling within your own community. That increases circulation of money in your community. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember I was looking at Black Wall Street, you know, just those kinds of communities where they had black entrepreneurship, businesses, establishments. That was pretty much every other other community in America after um, emancipation. Freedmen's mm -hmm. Bureau, they came with their one shot and got out there and they did their thing for 60 years. Yeah. Quick. So things like that. It's just like, you know, knowing how your community works, having 
a solid and useful education and knowing knowing your people, having connections and networking, but not for anything bad, just anything that can improve your quality of life. True indeed. Helps you want to have a stronger sense of self importance, self value. Yeah. That way you don't you don't become comfortable with the scraps. Like mm. you say, these are scraps. I deserve way more than this. I'm way more important than this. Like I'm gonna have more, so I'm gonna get more. That's it. Right. Um, black men and black women. This is a subject that comes up a lot with people, especially black people, of course. And I think it's a kind of subject that deserves a, a better, a different kind of attention. It, it needs to not be about scathing and proving who was wrong and smashing the windows out the car and knocking the bitch head off. They need to not be about any crazy ass shit like that. Let me just really be honest. It, it needs to stop being about that. I honestly think that this this white boy doesn't skew what an image of a real man is supposed to be. Has made it something very less and has achieved and has inspired all men in the world to achieve this. He's also also given the woman a set of instructions that don't necessarily complement what his manhood it should be receiving. It don't really it don't really link up. So you're giving like two false programs and people are trying to you know live and abide by it. You know what I mean? And a lot of the stuff don't really change for the better until you get old and realize something is a bit wrong. And maybe you can reapply it to yourself differently. But by then, a lot can end up being lost. Generations prove this type of shit. Um, when it comes to black men and black women, what do you think is necessary for uh, some type of even-keeled peace and respect to be there on all fronts? Mm, understanding power. Not to not to have it become something that you use to control others with. Like lots of the times um there are single mother households and let's say there's like one son and one daughter, there's a power imbalance going on there. Mm. Um so as far as black men and black women coexisting, cooperating, um, I think it's uh important to understand your influence, understand that your words have strong significance, understand how important you are in that person's life and vice versa and you know not being able not i mean not being able but not having um i guess the drive to overpower somebody a lot of times it's just about who gets the last word or you know who who gets the harsh harshest punish punishment it's not important it's like this there has to be some type of balance there has to be some type of awareness that okay this is what i'm about this is what you're about and just respect it Obviously, there'll be disagreements, but in order to have peace, I think there should be an understanding of power. Not to try to use somebody because you have this, or not to try to make somebody cave in or force them because you have that. That's what I feel. Because mm. <coughs> a lot of times, that's, that's why I feel it could <coughs> be, like, especially if there are single parent households, mm -hmm. the mothers oftentimes have to take on the role of two people. Right. It distorts a lot of things for the children, and it kind of gives them the wrong perception. So it's like most, I mean, I might speak, I don't know about every black woman, but like from what I can deduce from what I've seen, it's like they kind of feel like they have to be the bosses of everything. They have to control everything. They have, like, no, that's a lot of payload on you. It's a lot of stress. Like, you know, just have a balance of power. That's it. You have everybody feeling like, oh, you know, I have to do all this by myself. You know, this, it's not necessary. But you don't you don't know everybody's circumstances, but that's like an idealistic approach for me. Okay, I personally feel the same way that it needs to be understood that when you're trying to be this exemplary man, exemplary man and woman, you got to realize that being black, most of them rules don't quite apply to you. And I feel that you have to accept a different standard of rules. Most people prefer to be African about it. I, now that's understandable. Do whatever that makes it work for you. But I think men need to understand that first they come from women. That's your power, your mama. Okay, whoever told you that you was above a woman, I believe they lied to you. Like your leadership role, that's one thing, but you're not gonna be smarter or greater than your mother. You're just not gonna happen that way, okay? And what I try to explain to guys too is like, the daughters you have is like the moonlight reflection. Don't do the same thing as the sunlight, right? That moon, that woman, that's your daughter. You see what I'm saying? So in turn, she's come back around to kind of look at you and protect you just a little bit. Most men don't understand that, yet they always kind of like protect their daughter with like this boyish like, you know, like I'll save you, babe. Like, you know, not like, you know, some 
girlfriend, boyfriend shit, but like, you know how little boys like their moms, like, don't, don't talk to my mom that way. You know how it go. Some guys can be like that. In recognizing that I'm a, I'm a different type of father, I take a different approach. I don't be hovering over my kids because, first of all, they got horns like me. This one's a lion. My other's got, I got two rams and a Taurus. You can't hover over them type of children. You got to guide them. And even though every so often kick them down the hill so they learn what time it is, but, you know, that's, that's something different. Um, I think that black women need to also understand that they're not each other's enemy. They all they and they are both primary targets. Yeah, that's important. Okay, black man, you getting wrangled around the, the around the falsehood of her power on the negative end towards you, and vice versa. Okay, it is a design. It is a game. The system break man, child, and women into figures. Two columns for who is and who ain't niggers. That shit is real as fuck. And I think that black men and black women also need to give each other. Give yourselves, you know, that, that individual in the mirror, give yourself some credit. You come a real long way from a lot of different things, from, from the good and the bad. You come a very long way. You know, you hold the weight of the ancestors on you. This shit is real. Mm -hmm. And you really have to respect and understand that. Um, I think that spirituality is very, very necessary. I'm going to speak to you about that in a moment. I think that it's important for you to recognize what your dreams tell you. I think it's important that you recognize exactly what those, those errant feelings mean when something kind of happens behind it, I think, I think ritual is a little important too. You know, prayers and all that is very, very important. Those are all things that involve life force energy and they bring good things back if it's done the right way. Especially if, you work, if your works are, are, um, are pure and you know what they say they are. I think that also we need to um, talk about certain things that are happening without looking them try to blame somebody for all the time. We're so quick to say, you as a man, you as a woman. Like, how about me as an individual? Because let me tell you something, black people. We do not share credit scores. We do not share million-dollar publisher's clearinghouse drawing prizes. And we do not share docket numbers. So let's be clear on the we shit that go go over so far. A lot of the we has to do with us individually. I could be a chain forged from adamantium steel, unbreakable. Now she got the same willpower and fight as me, but hers is tinfoil. Hers is going to break. We got to make her into that, that rough chain that can never be broken. So it's about individual work. Because even if she and I got, oh my, we all got the rough chains and one brother don't. We going to fall when he falls, every single one of us. If we about that. So, you know, we got to be a little bit better. One more thing before we get back to spirituality. One of the things that was spoken about, you know, in my, in my early years of hip hop was, you know, we paid the price to circle of success. They turned my mic up. I'm about to hit these niggas with some shit that'll light your life up. That whole, that whole next part of that line, I know what it is. Y'all should know. If not, ask your fucking neighbor. That was a, a design of Damon Dashes that had to make sure everybody in that crew at the time was just like that. So if anybody needed help, it wasn't a big deal. You know, that's called group economics. Every hustler is strong, so nobody will be, so nobody will ever fall. It's something that needs to happen because what it does is it teaches you how powerful you really are as an individual, and it teaches you how powerful one dollar goes. I once watched Africa Bambada raise uh, something thirty, forty thousand dollars in a matter of minutes just by asking every member they online of Azula Nation for one fucking dollar. Four thousand people found a dollar, and all of a sudden somebody had fucking uh, lawyer fees. Think about that. Just one dollar, four thousand people. That's four thousand dollars. Math is right there. So back to spirituality with you. Because you, you know, you you want it a lot. You um you have a lot of big powerful dreams. I'm not gonna get into them, but yeah, they're you know, pretty in depth, yeah. <laughs> I'll be having to go get white candles and red candles and some honey and some, some white some white cloth and put it behind the door. I gotta go do things like that because of the kind of dreams that she's having. And it's really, really interesting. Um, how important is that do you think? To black people in the healing spirituality and healing mm -hmm. oh it's a very essential okay i feel like we're more we're more in tune with spirituality because you know of our ancestors and right a lot of um our our like i guess our native or um origin kind of ideas mm -hmm. like that those are like really important they kind of center us or ground us spirituality is really important actually i feel like a lot of us are too stuck in the material plane so when we have spirituality, it kind of like helps us. It can guide us too as well. Um, I think all of it's important, but we just have to know when the time's right for it. Because sometimes you can get lost and not care about it. Depends. 
but it is important, very important to know and to embrace it too. But you know, a lot of us are, a lot of black people are um, into religion and not spirituality, even though some people may think religion and spirituality are connected, and to some degree it is, but I'm talking about those religions who call what we would do voodoo. Like, that's, no, that's not know. what it is, <laughs> not at all. Them Abrahamic judgy bastards. Yeah, that's, <coughs> not, that's not what it is at all, and I think it's very misleading to, to call it that because you don't really know what's going on. Um, a lot of that comes from just being, just wanting to hide, I guess, the, the divinity behind a lot of that stuff. So people who are like heavily Catholic or Christian or Protestant or Baptist or something like that, if you mention things like spirituality, like, um, you know, lighting candles, having altars, they'll think it's something evil. Like most of the time, I will share these ideas with my friends and they, their parties religious, like, oh, don't do that, that's not safe, it's like a demon's gonna come. I'm like, how do you know that though? Like, have you ever tried it? Have you ever read into it? Have you ever did your research? Like, yeah, they'd you be hysterical, they watching TV and right, shit. Right, or did you just let somebody tell you that this is what it is and never to do it because this is what it is? Like, you know, stuff like that. But spirituality is very important, even something as, something as like small as meditating or giving yourself some time to breathe, giving yourself um, some healing crystals, a nice bath, something like that, you know, just to recharge. It's really important. Stress is real, it's crazy. It takes over you a whole lot. So that's important too. All yeah, stress things. is real, <coughs> especially for black people. It's, it's very, very real, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, health as well, yeah. Right, so um, a lot of what's going on recently in the media has a lot to do with the really ugly subject of sexual assault. And I, I really hate talking about it now, especially with you. But I feel it's important that, that your voice at this age be heard about what's going on. I think it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. I think it's also important that people understand that the standpoint from which you come, not you as a black woman, as for the black woman, that's something I really encourage my kids not to do is to do all the comparing and lumping in because it's, that's not really how it ought to be. Um, I think that uh, when you speak about these things, it's, it's important that they be heard because someone like you as intelligent as you at this age can see it for what it really is. And it's, it's, it's always so poignant to this 15 to 21 demograph, demographic anywhere in life. That's the time you, become into your, you come into your own level of awareness and you begin to experience things that are always kind of directed toward youth, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, it, it, to me, it seems like it's, you know, like bad intentions fueled by entitlement, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Selfish people who've been scarred and, you know, they, they, they go do it to somebody else. It's like it's a permanent thing. Um, I personally feel that sex education should be made more available. I think it should be more normalized. I think it should not be this great sacred mystery because it's being marketed by the powers that be and it's not a very good thing at all. I don't think it is. Um, just from a person that do be watching porn, I'll tell you right now, I'm growing with it. But that's a whole other side of it that can be put into a category that is for one thing versus the other. And we're talking about people with sound minds. And you can have your opinion about that, whatever you want. It's perfectly okay. You do something too that someone might go, ooh, shame, shame, shame. You know what you say? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. So I think that sex in this culture needs to be more explained. It needs to be more open. Okay, cultures where women's breasts is not is not a big thing to Google at usually don't have these kinds of problems with men subjugating women. Or just places where women are being heard, period. They just don't have this kind of thing going on. Um Sir and Mr. Man R. Kelly, all in the news. We all <coughs> heard the saw, whatever. I didn't watch the documentary, I'm not going to. I didn't want to say his fucking name, but it's it's sad how this is happening to these people it's sad how it happens to all the people all these children that he's dealing with and it's i think it's even more sad that people aren't allowed to say how they really feel about this dude and what's going on you're not allowed to separate the man from the music you know and i think that you could say in some instances it's one and the same but at the same time what you have to do is separate yourself from it because there's this high level of negativity that even if you've been a victim of assaults or things of that nature that you really have to learn to give yourself some space from as well. 
this is I'm not gonna go that far into it, but as a young woman, what what do you have to say to women your age? What is important for them to understand about finding themselves in situations or not finding themselves in situations or uh how important it is to have a a really strong sense of yourself so you don't end up making something like this seem like its operational ways are legitimate for towards an end or whatever like that be know yourself if right. you need to if you need to cut off your crowd of friends do it that's what happened with me i was in high school and i had like 11 other chicks I would hang out with, and I'm like, y'all are really problematic. And I'm, I'm looking at them now, like, they're all in some really strange, crazy, sad situations. I'm just like, you know, if you're somebody who has to second guess who you're hanging out with, please just don't, don't hang out with them. Like, a mm. lot of the times it's peer pressure. It may not even seem like peer pressure because it's not outward, but it really is. Um, you know, you're an individual before anything. I suggest you just stay within your own lane. And if you have people in your ear saying, oh, that's whack, oh, you're not down, you corny, you lame, like, all right, I'll be that. I'll be that for now because guess what? I'm going to be finding I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the end. So I would just say leave it alone, um, do your own thing, and call it a day. A lot of people kind of get smushed into wanting to be down with other people. Like, nah, just do your mm. own thing. Be your own person. Because everybody, some, somebody at my age probably would be like, I'm 18 now. I'm grown. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like, mm. it's not about that. It's really not. Because I know parents kind of like, oh, they kind of make it seem like it's something to be, like, hiding from. Like, oh, you, you can't do this because you're not this old. You can't do that because you're not this old. It's just like, now nah, I'm this old, and I get freedom. You're kind of going to get stuck. So know right. yourself first. <coughs> um, definitely just take your time because it's just not what you want to do. <laughs> like, I see other my, um, my friends, my family members are kind of, like, in some really bad stuff. So... Know yourself. That's all I have to say. And, and my message to parents is this, okay? You ain't got to whoop your kid's ass to be a good parent. You, you, you really ought not, but I suggest you do if you need to. Like about the fifth, tenth time it don't happen, a couple of smacks on the ass is okay according to ACS. Open hand, no weapons, okay? Like the most five. So get them in good. And don't make it an all-the-time thing. But you got to be in your kids every inch of their motherfucking ass. Your room? Fuck out of here. That's my room on loan. What's wrong with you? It's my bed sheets, my curtains, my clothes. You're damn right it's all mine. Till you get a job even in, it's still mine. That's how it needs to be with your children. You got to be in their life on all fronts, where they, the way they, where they really want you and especially where they don't want you. And you know what? If you were a sexual rap scallion as a fucking kid, you need to really, yeah, if you really let, I mean, like, don't sit there drunk, girl. I'm telling you about your mom and her day. Don't do shit like that. But for you to try to act like you don't want to give it up to your kids 100% so that in hopes that they don't say you was a liar or a hypocrite, you not going to pan out well for that. Hopefully your child is smart and don't, don't try to mimic the dumb shit just because. You feel what I'm saying? So I think it's important that parents also be open with their children. Give your child the room to say shit. If they're scared to talk to you, they're going to go out there and yeah, fuck somebody in the goddamn staircase. Good. It's not a joke. They'll it's do it. Good. Okay, some of y'all did it, you know that, and it's the same ideas. And as an adult, you should give yourself a space to recognize it about yourself. I made dumb choices, I made a few mistakes. You see what I'm saying? And I need to help my kids understand that this is what could happen. And you know what? You know the biggest thrill is seeing the fly all by itself. Just pray. Um, yeah, I was something wrestled on Facebook a while ago. What's up with this dude snatching the girl up at McDonald's, like? If you sitting in that spot and seeing that, you see that where the dude walked in there and grabbed the girl, started hitting her, and she punched him back and got her off. Him. Got oh, him over I that? saw that. Yeah. Yeah, like what? What goes to your mind when you see something like that? What happened? Uh, what you mean? What happened? Like, why is he bugging out? Or like? Just understanding what led up to that. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, what led up to it was the fact I think the dude was on drugs and some crazy shit because he went down the road after they got him off and tried to rob a gas station. And the police got him right there. So. I think something was kind of off for them, but people make it a black and white issue. What do you think about that? To make it a race issue? Yeah. It's not important. Why not? Because it's two people fighting. Who cares what race they are? Mm, that, okay. shouldn't, that shouldn't be important. What about enough? all the black men who really wouldn't help her get off or like kind of just like ease him more? What about them? What do you think about them? That's their reaction. Mm, okay. I personally feel like black men don't owe nobody to do all this type of stuff. I think we should all look out for each other equally. 
I think that what they how they got him off of him was was decent enough. I wouldn't have went so far to keep on trying to hurt him because it's a legal when issue. People are behind the screens on their keyboard in a state of emotional heightness or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They'll be up. They'll obviously be enraged by something, but um, pay attention to your brothers and sisters. You know how the shirt go, Warner brother. You know, do something like that, but. Let's not make it to where we, uh, why you ain't help this man? To, listen, shit, I don't have a gun. Look how big he was. It could be a million reasons why. I mean, but, especially if you're in the moment. <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't, like, what, like, come on now. Like, that's, that's right, an isolated right, event. Right. You're just watching something happen with the whole, making that into a race issue, it's, uh, it's pointless for that. All one. right, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the fifth installment of the No Main Topic Show. I want to thank my daughter Shakira for coming on. It's been Welcome. so good. It's been great. Got the first intelligent youth on here, kicking it live with Pop Duke. All right, got me feeling every bit of my 38, but it's all good. I got a 38 for you motherfuckers too, fucking with my kid. It's real, motherfucker. But if anything, before she have your ass fucked up, you got to call me. Yo, she won't stop hitting me. I told you don't fuck with that woman, didn't That's did not that. what I do. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's to lull you to sleep. <laughs> Keep it up. All right, Shakira, it was wonderful having you. You didn't want to put on the schoolgirl glasses. They were going to make fun of you. I don't care if people make fun of me. I <coughs> well, it was it was good having you here. I really appreciate it. I hope you come back again. Man, I'm going to bring your brother on the show because my son is a math whiz. Lord have mercy. You blow shotgun in the air, he'll count the buckshot real fast. He's nice like that. Shout out to S Street Media. Shout out to Mav, shout out to Sosa, shout out to Shakira, and myself, Coquito underscore King underscore NY. I love you all. Thanks for the time. Peace.